Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tony here, and we're back with a brand new video. Um, so before we get into the video, I'd just like to say thank you guys for uh, watching, continuing to come back every day and watch. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I think that <clears throat> I'm really building something that can be bigger than just you know you guys watching my videos. I think uh, some of you guys have been DMing me and stuff. I think I've built a pretty good relationship with you guys, and um, I'm interested to kind of see just where the community goes as a whole. Uh, and I think that, you know, every person on board is good for the community. And I think that it's really, really important that you guys interact, um, not just with me, but with other creators. Um, but anyway, getting into the video today, what I want to talk about is optic, um, and what I think that team is going to be, you know, there's been a lot of speculation around, um, and I want to kind of just talk about that. So let's throw out a scenario let's say optic does not get karma as their fifth who will their fifth be um so interestingly um uh, optic actually reached out to apathy uh before the eg envy move apathy arsities and um can't really remember who the third was maybe it's jcap but um don't quote me on that one um but that means that optic is probably you know, pretty scared about losing karma, I guess, uh, and rightfully so, right, because, you know, with next year coming out, he is going to be nuts, like, if you watch him play in the beta, he's a step ahead ever, ever, of everybody, and that's nuts, um, so let's say Optic gets maybe a gunless, like, that is huge for one, I'm, yeah, that was the third guy, it was not Jacob, but let's say they get a gunless, that team is already like 10 times better with Gunless. Um, and, you know, going 5v5, uh, it's it's going to be insane to see what kind of fifth they come out with. Because, you know, they could have a subpar fifth. You know, maybe they even start to look at some of this younger talent. You know, I already know that they have TJ and Dashy. But what if they potentially picked up like an Ibizi? Uh He does have a huge, huge buyout from E6, so I think it's like 50k or something, which is insane, he's probably not competing this year, he doesn't get bought out by a top tier org, but maybe they pick someone up like a BZ, maybe they pick up, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but it could even be, you know, some of these uh, veteran players, um, you know, it, it's a potential that, you know, there's a lot of players that could be in that situation, because you never know what organizations are going to hold on to which players and what optics are going to get stuck with. You'd think that they'd have first pick, but with 100 Thieves coming in the picture and the rich, rich guy, mystery org owner, I mean, there's a lot of potential for a bunch of different rosters. And so it's going to be interesting to see what optic get because, you know, maybe optics not willing to spend all this money on, you know, their fifth COD player because... 100 Thieves in this Mystery Orgon are willing to throw as much money as they need to to secure the players that they want. I think that that is going to be a problem for Optic in getting their fifth. Um, I think it would be interesting to kind of see an Arsides, um on Optic. But in terms of roles and stuff, would that that would mean that Krim would most likely be the flex. Arsides would be the second AR, depending on the meta. Um... I'd probably imagine it'd be a three sub meta. If I had to guess just by the way the beta was played, um with the Cordite and the I'm trying to think of the other I can't remember the other gun, but um Spitfire. Just judging by those two guns, I think that and the MX nine. Um it, it's gonna be interesting to see whether it's three ARs or four AR or three ARs or two ARs. Um you know, just how important is that flex player gonna be? Cause you know, if you get into the game and you picked up three main sub players and then the game's AR dominant, you're going to have a problem. Um, but the meta's always changing. That's something that's really good for teams. But I think that the, if Optic wants to be the most successful this year, I think that they need to get um, an in-game leader, you know, a veteran. Um, because I do think that, you know, Krim has said before, he doesn't want an in-game lead. And I think that that's kind of surprising to me almost but you know what about having damon as an in-game leader uh and i don't know how much better he's been on his call outs uh since you know previous years but i remember when he was on the cole eg team and they had the coach 
Uh, the coach is actually calling out for him. So, I mean, how beneficial is he going to be as an in-game leader? You know, if he if he can't even call out that stuff, you know, how... I mean, is he really going to be able to in-game lead them? And that's something that's really, really interesting. So you may see um, one of the other potential, like, possibilities that I thought was maybe a enable, you know, as an in-game leader. Uh, he's been in that role before. I don't... I mean, he obviously didn't do too well, but... You know, maybe he would do better going into this year. And I think that it would honestly kind of make sense just with his veteran background. But you could say the same about Scump and Krim. Um, but so that's just some interesting stuff for you guys to think about. Um, and yeah, so make sure to leave a like, guys. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I will see you tomorrow. As always, peace.